YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's engraven here with another video and in this video we are here to review yet another list and y'all know me I love going over other people's lists their top five this their top 10 that their top 32 this especially in this instant uh, but I hate making my own I hate it with a passion but in today's video we're going to go over PFF who a lot of Ravens fans they just like PFF oh pfft. I don't like that place but we are here to go over PFF's top 32 best outside corners. Not best cor best outside corners. So that's important as we move forward through this list. And let's just read the criteria. It says, NFL defenses will ask very different things of their cornerbacks depending on the scheme that they run. Some cornerbacks are tasked with shutting down their side of the field and zone, while other top cornerbacks are given the unenviable job of following the opposing team's number one wide receiver in man coverage. It's part of what makes identifying the league's best at the position so challenging. So here is PFF's take on the top 32 outside corners. Entering the 2021 NFL season, featuring stiff competition for the top spot among several players under the age of 27. So very young guy. So number one, to get right into it, Jair Alexander from the Packers. That guy is amazing. He is amazing. Him being at the number one spot, A-OK. -okay. No problem there at all, whatsoever. He deserves it. Number two, Jalen Ramsey. <laughs> Another one. A beast. Jalen Ramsey is somebody that runs his mouth. He talks that talk. But he backs it all up. And he's somebody that the Ravens could have had, but they didn't want to give up that additional pick. Anyway, we don't need to get into that. Jalen Ramsey continues to do what he does. He is a monster. Number three. Oh, Marlon Humphrey made it to number three. Ooh, ooh, whoa. He is high up on this list. Marlon Humphrey. Wow, okay. And let's read in detail what they had to say about Marlon Humphrey. We consider putting Humphrey atop the list of the best slot cornerbacks in the NFL, given that he has spent the majority of his snaps lined up in the slot over the past two seasons, filling the void left by an injured Tavon Young. Humphrey's seamless uh, inside-outside versatility is a big reason why he ranks so highly here. They're not done. The fifth-year cornerback out of Alabama has recorded at least 800 coverage snaps in the slot and out wide throughout his NFL career. He also ranks in at least the 80, 87th percentile in coverage grades at both alignments. The most impressive part is that it all comes in a man-heavy Baltimore defense. Few cornerbacks in the league possess that kind of ability. As soon as I saw him at number three, the first thing I thought of was, wait a minute, this is best outside corner. Then Marlon Humphrey, they just have him in the slot, like a lot. And, but I, I really appreciated that they put that in there. The fact that he uh, has taken the place of Tavon Young. Because, you know, a lot of times, and it's to no fault of their own, but a lot of times these list creators and makers and whatnot, they will just look at numbers. They'll look at numbers, look at grades, look at this and that, but they won't know the background of it. But when you know the background of something, it, it helps that much more. So I, I can really appreciate that breakdown. Ooh, they got Marlon Humphrey at number three. Ooh, that's high. That's good, but the, the versatility. But again, it's talking about outside cornerback. When Marlon Humphrey's on the outside, oh yeah, he does his thing there. He does his thing there for sure. I think um, had he been able to really stay on the outside as a cornerback, which I think he'll get back to this season, especially with the additions of Sean Wade and Tavon Young coming back, and hopefully Tavon Young stays healthy, but Sean Wade is there as a just-in-case guy. But I think Marlon Humphrey can get back to being that outside corner that we know him to be instead of being in the slot. Even though he did his thing from the slot, even though he's not a slot corner. He's an outside guy. So shout out to Hump. Anyway, uh, number four, Xavier Howard from the Dolphins. This guy gets like 25 picks every single year, man. He gets like 25 picks a year. Uh, it's crazy. You would think that he was like a safety or something. And it's weird because he keeps getting picks, but these, these quarterbacks, they keep throwing at him. They keep throwing at him. See, now that would be a backstory that I would like to know. And you know what? Let's, let's read it. It said, Howard is one of the best, making play, one of the best playmaking cornerbacks that the NFL has to offer. Since entering the league in 2016, 18.7 of his targets and coverage have resulted in a pass breakup or an interception, leading all cornerbacks who have been targeted at least 150 times over those five years. Howard's 2020 performance put that playmaking ability on full display with double-digit pass breakups and interceptions to go along with an 89.6 coverage grade. Okay, well, thank you, PFF, for the breakdown. Number six, James Bradbury from the Giants. Okay, little sleeper right here. 
James Bradbury. I think he used didn't he used to play for the Panthers? I want to say he did. I think he did. Um, but anyway, he's number five. Uh, number six. <laughs> currently, as of the recording of this video on June third, current. Patriots cornerback Stephon Gilmore. It's been a lot of buzz in the air about him possibly being traded. Nothing yet. So it's like he on the same boat as Julio. Nothing yet. So we'll wait and see. Um, but yeah, Stephon Gilmore is at number six. Really good cornerback. Um, mm, just imagine. I, and I know it wouldn't happen, but just imagine if the Ravens could have had their Marlon Humphrey, had their Marcus Peters, Jimmy Smith, Stephon Young. Then they had Stephon Gilmore to the. I just be mad. I just be thinking of that stuff sometimes. Anyway, number seven, Tredavious White. If we're thinking about it, I would probably put him at number three or four. Like straight up, man. I'd probably put him at number three or four. Tredavious White. I would definitely put him top five. For for sure. But so I think he's a little bit low. Even though he's number seven, I still think he's low. Number eight, Denzel Ward. Mm. Denzel Ward is nice. Nice cornerback. But, again, the health concerns. That's his biggest knock on Denzel Ward. Nice corner. Very good cornerback. But the health concerns. It's, that's tough. But very good. When he's on the field, excellent. Number nine, William Jackson III. Former Cincinnati Bengal belief. Went uh, to the Washington football team. Let me read about him. Because I'm, I'm I, I know he used to play for the Bengals. But, and I know he's very, very fast, but I didn't know he was like that, like that. Well, he's at number nine. He said, Washington possessed one of the better defenses in the NFL in 2020. Jackson's addition should only improve it, giving them a number one cornerback who will allow them to play more man coverage, if they desire. Jackson's burst onto the scene with a 90.4 coverage grade in his first season of action back in 2017. He allowed just 30 receiving yards on 359 coverage snaps across his final 11 games that year. Uh, Jackson hasn't quite reached those lofty heights in the three years since. But he is coming off his best statistical season in 2000, since 2017 with just 52% of the passes into his coverage being completed in 2020. I'm confused because they have him at number nine, but the way that they worded that whole thing, it doesn't make him sound like he would be at number nine. But anyway, number 10. Oh, two Ravens in the top 10. Marcus Peters, MP Juice, man. Now we know about the playmaking ability. We know about it and we love it and we appreciate it. I've liked Marcus Peters even before he came to the Baltimore Ravens. That dude, boy, that boy got some attitude on him. And perfect fit for the Ravens. Because it brings life. It brings energy. Sometimes the attitude can get the best of him. When things going bad, ooh, it can be a big yikes. But when things going good, ooh, it can be a big yikes for the opposing receiver. And again, with Marcus Peters... When he's lined up against you and he gets to clapping like that, ooh, yeah, that means you have been having a bad game and he has been having an amazing day. But let's read what they said about Marcus Peters. Peters and Humphrey are the only top 10 duo on this list and a big reason why Baltimore secondary has had the success that it has had over the past two seasons. It's impossible to discuss what Peters brings to the table and not start with his knack for getting his hands on the football. As his 31 interceptions since entering the league in 2015 are nine more than any other cornerback. That's crazy. That's crazy. Anyway, uh, and Peters ranks tied for fifth at the position in pass breakups over that same time frame. Okay, so Peters, he be getting his hands on the ball in more ways than one. Not just picks, but the pass breakups too. That's something that I didn't realize, but I appreciate a lot. His aggression will burn him on occasion. Oh, but you can't say that Peters doesn't make up for it with the positive he brings to the table. Say that's everything Everything that I said too, man. Everything that I said, they, yeah, they, they nailed it. They nailed it. So... Thank you, PFF. We appreciate that. Next up, at number 11, Richard Sherman. Okay. I want to read about this one. Richard Sherman, it says there, and he's a free agent as of this video, June 3rd. There's a perception that Sherman's better days are behind him, but entering his age 33 season, there's still plenty of room for Sherman to take a step back and still be one of the better cornerbacks in the NFL. He and Darrell Reeves are the only two cornerbacks with at least 250 targets since 2010 who have allowed fewer than 50% of those passes to be completed. Injuries held him to just over 300 snaps for the 49ers last season, but Sherman was the highest graded cornerback in the league back in 2019. He's one of the more impactful free agents still on the market. So now it's like, okay, now you're, you're, you're starting to lose me a little bit now. This list is starting to get a little bit shaky now. But let's keep going. Again, it's, it's the top 32 outside cornerbacks heading into this season. 
Number 12, Adoree Jackson, on, who's on the Giants. Former Tennessee Titans first round pick, Adoree Jackson. All right, this list is getting a little real shaky. Now, number 13, Steven Nelson, another free agent. He used to play for the Chiefs. He played for the Steelers. And now he hasn't been picked up yet. I remember with him, um, <laughs> right before he got released, uh, he tweeted something. Like, showing that he wanted to get released. And then, boom. Not even an hour later, he was out of there. Uh, next, um, 14, Byron Jones from the Dolphins. Okay, so Dolphins got two cornerbacks in the top 15. Byron Jones was their big free agent acquisition from uh, the Dallas Cowboys. And he was known, not for getting interceptions, but for not letting that receiver catch the ball. He was known for being locked down and locked up, but not for getting picks, which is fine. That's still, you still want that in the cornerback. Cornerback's number one job is to not let the receiver catch the ball. That's the number one job. So he did a good job of that. So shout out to Byron Jones. Uh, number 15, Carlton Davis. Oh, wow. Okay. So in number 16, J.C. Jackson. Oh, that's, that's Mr. Pitt right there. That dude, he gets like a bunch of interceptions all the time. That dude, is, I think he got a magnet for the football, man. Something. Uh, cause he, anyway, number 17, Joe Hayden. Ooh, Joe Hayden. Said Hayden may be on a downward slope of his career, but he has provided Pittsburgh with steady play at the cornerback position since joining the team in 2018. Yeah, wow, he's been there for a little while now, man. That's crazy. It, time flies, man. Anyway, number 18, Marshawn Lattimore. Oof. Now, Marshawn Lattimore, if you put all his games <laughs> against Mike Evans, he would be number one. If you just if you only graded it by his games against Mike Evans, he'll be number one. He locks that dude up every time. Uh, number 19, Jamil Dean. Mm. I have no knowledge about J Jamil Dean at all. At all. I'm very naive to Jamil Dean. Number 20, Darius Williams. Oh, from the Rams. Former Baltimore Raven. Darius Williams. He, hey, it worked out for him. So shout out to him for making it. Uh, number 21, Kyle Fuller from the Denver Broncos. Number 22, Jason Verrett from the 49ers. Now, he used to be with the Chargers, I believe, too. Uh, number 23, oh, big play Slay. Darius Slay from the Eagles. Their big uh, acquisition from last season. So shout out to Big Play Slay. Number 24, Bradley Roby from the Texans. I think he started off his career with the Broncos, I believe. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe so. Anyway, 25, Shaquille Griffin. Oh, yeah, Jaguars. I was about to say Seahawks, but he left there. And his brother's getting ready to... His brother's a free agent now. His brother's a pass rusher, outside linebacker. So he's getting ready to be on a new team, too, because I don't think the Seahawks signed him back. Number 26, Kendall Fuller from the Washington football team. Number 27, Janoris Jenkins from the Titans. 28, Malcolm Butler from the Cardinals. Oh, Malcolm Butler, that guy. Uh, number 29 is Ronald Darby from the Broncos. Uh, number 30, Xavier Rose from the Colts. Oh, okay. Xavier Rose, man, when he was with the Vikings, he was like up and down. And then the Vikings, I guess they were just like, eh, okay, bye. You into the Colts? Solid. 31, Trey Waynes. Now, Trey Wayne, I know he was always known for his speed, but I thought he had a, it was a big yikes in his coverage skills. But according to PFF, no, he's number 31. And last but certainly not least is uh, Casey Hayward Jr. from the Las Vegas Raiders, who Ravens will be getting an up-close and personal look at come week one of this season on Monday Night Football. So shout out to PFF. Uh, this was a fun list, uh, as they always are. I, I, I always enjoy these PFF lists, whether I agree or disagree with a particular player or the list as a whole, I always enjoy them. And I appreciate them for making these lists because they are very uh, fun to go over. Um, and, and just to really just to really share with everybody, too, and to give my thoughts on it and to hear everybody else's thoughts on it, too. So y'all let me know what you think about this list. Who was wrong? Who was right? Who should have been better? Who should have been worse? And on that note, we out.